Hi, it's Larry here of Xbox Live's Major Nelson. Welcome to the official Xbox podcast. We're here for another week. Here are your friends, me, and then let me bring in my two friends, Rebecca over there, Jeffrey over there, and you right there. Hey, everybody. How you guys We doing? got promoted to friend. <laughs> We're always wow, friends. Wow, we're friends. We're, all, we're always friends. Are we just talking about Xbox Live friends? No. IRL <laughs> friends. Mm. Although, yeah, Jeff and I were invited to your house for Thanksgiving. Jeff and I got to spend some time earlier this week. We actually did. I don't know if you if you follow us on Instagram or, or Twitter, uh, Rebecca. I think you do. Uh, but Jeff and I had a chance to go to Sometimes. our first offsite together, which was in you know offsites. For those of you that don't know, in the corporate world, is when teams get together and kind of go. We did. We didn't do trust falls. No, let's get that out of the way. Um, but we got to get together and talk about you know some stuff we're working on. So that was fun, and we missed you, Rebecca, because you're in New York. It's okay. I was having fun on my own. <laughs> <laughs> it was no New York. Sorry, we, uh, we walked on a lot. <laughs> I mean, it was the opposite of New York. Uh, but it was but awesome. anything that we did, there's like a bar for it in New York. It'd be like, oh, you oh, you went you went to a waterfall. We have a waterfall bar here. Okay, yeah. and uh, you need a secret password to get. Oh, you hiked a trail. Oh, we we have a dirty floor in our bar. So. I mean, it looked like you guys had some nice views, but I, my parents actually came to town last weekend. And so I took them to the World Trade Center and we went up to the 102nd floor of uh, the Freedom Tower. So isn't isn't that, is Jeff, and I, Jeff and I did that. Isn't that I elevator ride up amazing? <laughs> It's pretty awesome. I kind of judged the uh, the other dad in the elevator who started taking a video while we were in the elevator, but then my dad and I both did it on the way down. So yeah, okay. it's a pretty cool right. elevator ride. It's funny yeah. when, when Jeff and I did that. In fact, I found that elevator ride, Jeff, on my phone the other day because um, I remember Rebecca, you and I, you were telling me you're going there, and I was that guy who took the video because I was like, this is really cool, and it just got cooler and cooler as you got. I don't want to spoil it for anybody that goes, but it's it's a it's a brilliant way to pass the time while you're going up 100 floors this is like the definition of like the journey is as good as the destination because it's the best elevator in america <laughs> no, i assume i've been into all yeah. every elevator in the yeah. lower 48 <laughs> there might be a better one in alaska that i haven't been to the uh that, rebecca <laughs> i assume you guys went up there on a nice day so you had nice clear visibility into hoboken that's in New Jersey, right? Yes, it is in New Jersey, yes. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. My dad basically just wanted to see the Statue of Liberty from the top of the tower, which we did. Um, and then it rained. But for the most part, we got our photos. We got to enjoy the view. But that's what I'm learning about New York. It rains quite a bit in the summertime. Or maybe it's just the summer. Uh, yeah, I think it's just the summer. I mean, as, as, as a resident of Seattle, you know that it rains out here quite a bit. But I know that my family and friends back east, they're complaining about a lot of the rain. So it's a little, it seems like it's a little above normal this year. I don't think it's okay. rained one time since you've left, Rebecca. Like, literally not once. Yeah. So. Don't Maybe rub it in. Please don't rub it in. <laughs> for the apple. The apples need you. The apple crop. Anyway, we're, uh, we should talk about what we're playing this week because it's been a pretty good week for releases. Um, pretty I, I, good. Come on, a great some week. some sell sell here, Larry. I got to tell you this exciting. week. This week there's there's game release weeks, Jeff, and then there's game release weeks. This one is <laughs> fantastic. Future week. civilizations will uncover. You know they they will be sifting through the detritus of of our civilization, and they will remark that this week was a peak gaming week. We had a we had a. It may not be raining uh, here in Seattle, but it is raining games, Jeffrey. <laughs> Oh, there we go. That's nice the one. one. Let's keep that. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, yeah, we're we're we're. Let's go through. I'm, Rebecca, ladies first. I'll let you go first since you're representing, <laughs> and we'll want to talk. Well, you've, we've got a couple interviews that we're going to talk about, but let's talk about what you're playing first. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil the interview, but I've been playing Death Store, which released on Tuesday, I believe. Uh, so it's PC and Xbox One exclusive. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you if you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend trying it out. It's It kind of gave me the feelings of like Cuphead nostalgia, where I was intensely frustrated at some moments and like shouting profanities and waking my roommate up. And then there were the moments of euphoria after defeating kind of like the bigger monsters and bigger bosses and collecting those souls but right. it's awesome like the soundtrack is really good like it plays really smoothly um have you guys tried it yet jeff yeah uh i've gotten through i just beat the witch which isn't a spoiler there's a mm. witch it's great she calls you a yeah. little s She's in the which art. i thought yeah. was great and i took a screenshot <laughs> of that I, uh, so, uh yeah it is it's very 
I will say this. If this game was a roguelike, I probably would have stopped already. Like if, if every time you died, you had to go back to the beginning. I would say for a game that's this challenging, and it is challenging, it is also forgiving in terms of like checkpointing mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. You can slowly grind up to make yourself a little bit stronger. Um, it's really good. This is a game I thought I was going to play for an hour. I thought I would... First time I died, I was like, I'm probably not going to keep playing. And then like four hours goes by and I'm like, I'm going to, I guess I am like just good enough to keep playing and just kind of like breadcrumbs you along where it's always challenging. And I know I think it's, it's great. It's great. And didn't only like, a, I mean, I'm sure you'll talk about the interview, but I heard like only two people made this game. Is that accurate? I don't know if that's. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I don't think it's a hundred percent accurate, but I know that it is not a large team. It's not. It's not much more than that. So I don't know if that's the actual. Actual. You tell us what you think about it. Why I, I look at. I look that up. Yeah. I, so I'm. I'm actually playing it as well, and you know you can see it right here on my dashboard. It's sitting right there, ready to go. Of course, I took a controller update, but that's something separate. Uh, but yeah, I'm playing that, and it's. I got. It's funny because it, you know I don't want to give too much of a spoiler away, as you said, Jeff and Rebecca will talk a little bit about this, but. The game starts you right off, right out of the chute. You're in a boss battle. <laughs> and that was like, yeah. that was like, I was having, I, when I was listening to your interview, Rebecca, I, you know, you were talking about it was frustrating. And I was like, I was getting frustrated. But then, you know, I figured out the pattern and did what I needed to do. And it was, it was rewarding. And then it unlocks and continues on the game. And then you start to learn more about the game mechanics. So Death Store is mm -hmm. a beautiful, game. highly, highly rated. I was looking at the Metacritic. It was like 85 or 90. So it was, I don't know where it is now. Yeah. It's but getting it's, really good reviews. It's getting really good. And this, Jeff, I believe you said it before we started recording. This is uh, this is an exclusive, correct? Correct. And yes. so it's made by Acid Nerve. Acid yep. Nerve is a two-person team from Manchester, UK. wonder if they like City or United. Uh, making independent games <laughs> with artists from around the world. So they would have had help you know, on the art side, but it was Mark Foster uh, from Foster the People. Is that the same Mark Foster? I'll just assume so. Great musician. And uh, David Fenn. Um, and so, yeah, anyway. In fact, in fact, Rebecca, Rebecca will interview David Fenn uh, later on in the show. He got to spend some time. So that's 50% of the studio that Rebecca was doing. So they were not doing any work. 50% of the studio stopped working to talk to Rebecca. So we'll play that later. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Great. You know, I, kudos uh, to him for not, you know, not bragging on that. But he did kind of give me like jack of all trades vibes. Like I think he was like, oh, I'm producer and like designer and composer <laughs> and all of these other things. So it makes sense now. Yeah, you'll you'll you're yeah. He's the producer, designer, composer, and sound designer. And then Mark Foster is the programmer, designer, writer, and animator. Anyway, the games that you would never know because it's just a very high quality game, like all the way through. It's fantastic. So yeah, yeah so that's play. that's uh, that's so we'll we'll have that interview later on in the show. Um, and then the other interview we have, we talked about interviews. Uh, is Jeff is going to give you some more details about Battlefield? Now this is an amazing new Battlefield. Do we calling it a mode, Jeff? What are we calling it? Yeah, it's uh, so it's Battlefield Portal, and and we're recording this actually as EA Play Live is happening. So we got a sneak peek look, and um, so when we saw Battlefield 2042, a uh, you know about a month ago, you know we saw the things we expected, but with like a huge 128 players on Xbox Series X, but um, I think it's called All Out Warfare, and it's just yeah. like whoa, this is going to be huge. But imagine if you could remix like tons of different uh, abilities or modes and maps from previous and current Battlefield. So Battlefield, Bad and Company future 2, Battlefield. and Battlefield 3, <laughs> Battlefield 1942, yeah. and, and, and say, okay, I mean, it, it gets crazy, but as an example, it was like, how about if uh, we took 20 sort of drones controlled by players and let's pit them against one tank. Great. There's a mode. Go. Uh, or nice let's crazy. let's have an uh, um you know four uh future troops from twenty forty two play a World War II map against thirty-two German army folks with like, you know, M1s or whatever the German version of the M1 Garand was. And and we, old tech versus new tech, but they have the number supremacy. You can make that. You can remix all these things. It's actually an incredibly deep system. And you know, we're gonna have uh the GM from from uh, the developers uh, from uh, Ripple uh, Studios to to sort of talk us through it. It's gonna yeah, and they're really going to cool. show us a little bit. I don't know if you've seen this, Rebecca, but as Jeff was saying, you can you can remix all these things, and the way you do it is almost like this base. It's almost like coding. 
you know, if you want, what do you want this to do? If then, so on and so forth. And we'll show a little yeah. bit of that user interface. You probably, if you watched EA Play, you probably saw that. So we'll talk about that. So we've got some Battlefield coverage. We've got some uh, Death Store coverage. Another great week of interviews, courtesy of my lovely co-hosts here. Thank you, guys. Very cool. Happy so. to do your job for you. Um, I meant <laughs> just to help out. Where, where That's why he brought us on the show. We're his friends. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. This is a very one-way relationship here. Bring it uh, right, what else? What else forgive are you guys us. playing? I mean, we talked about some of those things. Obviously, Jeff and I are not, or, or Rebecca, we're not playing uh, Battlefield yet. We'll hopefully do that. But Jeff, what else you got that you've been chipping away at? Well, let, let's talk about what we played together last week. That's right. After the interview. Yeah, we played a little bit of F1, the new uh, the new base. It's, would you call that a head to head mode? Uh, there's so they have a two player career mode, and we talked a little bit about it during the interview with Codemasters, and so. Um, you get to, I, I played a bunch of the single player story mode and I got into it. You did, you just jumped right into two player career mode. And, and anyway, we were on the same team. I, I can't remember were we on Mercedes. I can't remember what team we think, picked. No, we picked I Aston think, Martin. Yeah. It was either, I it was asked because it was green and then, yeah, right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so together now, look, we don't know a lot about F1. So it was like, how about your tech setup? And we're like, eh, yeah, looks good. It's good. Let's go. Let's, not let's only race. Do we not know a lot about F1, but. In the first corner, Rebecca, Jeff spun me out. And in the back of the pack is where I stayed for the rest for the remaining four laps. What a I didn't know I did it. Uh, but I finished fourth. So if you aggregate the two, <laughs> yeah. like our average finish was like 12. That's not, I mean, it's not great. It was, it was a lot. Of, I mean, the game the game looked beautiful. It was a lot of fun. But yeah, it was a, as a as a uh, F1 noob, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's racing is racing. You understand the you know, first one across the finish line wins, but there's a lot of nuances in it, right, Jeff? Yeah, no, it was it was it was really fun, and uh, you know, uh, you can spin me out next time, That's and fine. and we'll we'll call it even. Um, you know, <laughs> it was. I felt really bad. I didn't like slow down and check on him. I assume no, you, you, were okay. you, did, you just are hey, you doing okay back there? It's for the best going. of the team. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I fun. didn't lap you, so you did. You recovered pretty well, and and so that part's good. Yeah, it just wouldn't get. But anyway, nice yeah. work, Larry. I'm, I'm digging for silver linings here. Like <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> did, did the best with a I diamond could. shovel here, and I'm not getting there. So played a little bit of F1. I uh, want to talk about something else that yeah. I got to play that we talked about um, earlier this week, which is Psychonauts Two. So Psychonauts 2 is coming out in mm -hmm. August. It's from Double Fine. We're very excited about it. Yep. And um, I got uh, hands on. You probably saw some preview coverage. I saw a couple of uh, influencers that we work with um, that we gave them. We didn't tell them what to say. We're just like, hey, if you want to play, you can play. And a couple of people. It. I heard game of, potential game of the year, you know, candidate or nominee. And it's, it's July just, it's we're really talking fun. game of the year, Jeff. This is okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah. We're past halfway. Uh, We're past fair, halfway. Fair point. Fair point. Anyway, I, I, it's one of those things where I think um, this game's just really good. And, right. I, you know, having never really played the original, I ended up afterwards going back and playing because it's, it's an Xbox Game Pass. You can play Psychonauts 1. And I started playing that and seeing, oh, okay, that, that was a holdover from 1. You don't really need to have played the first one. We're actually working with uh, some creators. You create a sort of a catch-up video. It's also something in the game as well that sort of lets you know who the main characters are. Uh, but for a platformer, in case you missed I, I, actually calling it a platformer is really not doing it a, a great service. There right. is like a significant variety in terms of how you can um, uh, you know, progress through the maps, your traversal, I think is the word, um, different attacks, the way you can mix and match. There's RPG elements where there's a lot of collectibles, but those collectibles aren't just for achievements. Those collectibles are to be invested into like uh, skill points or things like that. So you're not just finding things for the sake of finding things, right. you're finding things um, you know, to make this ability better or to unlock something else. But it's all just incredibly clever how they take things that we talk about, about our psyche, like mental baggage or just like, you know, <laughs> doubts uh, and turns them into corporeal things. And so like for the, for the, for the, the mental baggage, you have to find their lost tag and then you can send them on their way. Um, the, the doubts uh, are, are things that actually like hunt you. Bad ideas blow up in your face. So um, it's just, it's very, very clever. It looks great. It's very stylistic. I kind of like almost, uh, 
like a Tim Burton esque like vibe. If you've never played the first one, like 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 Beetlejuice, you know, was a video game. Obviously, different uh, sort of you know subject matter, but definitely like it. when you think of that yeah. style, there that's definitely what I kept thinking of. But really cool. Definitely one to watch out for. Obviously, it'll be on Xbox Game Pass for PC and for for Xbox on on day one, and that day one is only about a month away. Now, my job, you know, one of the many things I do here is is to translate for Jeff, and he used a big word there, corporeal. <laughs> so I want to make sure that everybody knows what that means because I want don't want to leave any. No, unlike Jeff, I'm not going to leave anybody behind on this racetrack. So we are going. Wow, to okay. <laughs> you're spinning me wow. out now, Larry. So we're, we're going to be Corpor- here. corporeal is relating to a person's body, especially as a, opposed to their spirit. So there you go. I might have misused the word, but I I, we'll, I think it'll work. Someone will call me out on that. I just want to make sure that uh, I'm providing a little bit of uh, Jeff translation here. So that's uh, anyway. Yeah, Psychonauts too. We'll have uh, working on getting Tim on in the coming weeks. Uh, Tim Schaefer, who's uh, been on the show quite a few times, but it's always great to chat with him. So we'll 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 line him up for something a little bit closer to launch. When's launch again, Jeff? You said August, right? Yeah, it's it's August 24th. I want to say. Um, yeah, August 24th. But it like, doesn't yeah. matter because if you're in Game Pass. It's already going to be in your library, ready to download because it's coming straight to game. Twenty fifth day and twenty fifth. So there you go. Day but it'll day. be like the twenty fourth in Australia. I'm going to hedge on that one. All right. <laughs> uh, anyway, we've got Larry. Uh, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been let's see. I've been playing uh, Death Store. Um, I don't know, if, uh, Jeff. I don't know if we can talk about this yet. Can we? I'll, okay. There's a game that's out air on, on the side of not. <laughs> okay. You, okay. Yeah. So there's 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 a there's a clue. It's air. And it's a game that's on. You, you can talk about this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Flight Simulator on the console on Xbox Series X. I'm okay. playing a little bit of that. And it's yeah. it's kind of crazy. I was I was I don't know what I was flying. I was just having the greatest time in this in this uh, just kind of flying around. You know what everybody does. I flew over my childhood home and the city and my high school and things like that. And it was just it was just really cool to have that controller experience on the big screen. You know, I played it on PC. It's beautiful. This is a controller, um, you know, a controller experience. And that's that's coming out again to Game Pass. And that's coming out the end of this month, Jeff, right? 20, I think the 28th. That is coming out on July 27th. So really 27th. just a few mere days away. And what I found is I have a, my gaming PC has a 2080 Super, which is like good, certainly not top of the line. It's super easy. Um, yeah, but like you can, I mean, if you've got something with, that begins with a three, like you know, you can you get more and more out of that game. The fact that it can run on console on the Series X and S is is pretty amazing. So, uh, and there are, I would say, um, there's two things. I would uh, one is there's some like sort of like let's get you in the air faster. There's some sort of easy start sort of things. You'll be able to find them that like, hey, do you want to see the pyramids or Mount Fuji or the Eiffel Tower? Let's go. We're going to do the thing where you like you when you hit it, you just start in the air and then you can just like go and you can do that sort of sightseeing. And you know what? That's like the joy. Then if you want to get into the specifics of how you taxi your your plane and you get into the air and all this, everyone is hung up turning off the parking brake, by the way. That's like the pro tip for me is you got to really? turn the parking brake off. Yeah. And by the way, yeah, it's like when it starts out, your car's got your car, your plane's got the parking brake on and <laughs> you can like rev it up and you're not going anywhere. Yeah. The, um, you kind of tilt you down because it, it's going forward. Like it's trying to go, but your yeah, parking yeah, brake is tail, tail going up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also when you first play, you're, you're going to want to be like, Oh, let me fly a plane that I've been in like a 747 or a Dreamliner or something like stick with a small plane, something that's like a prop, like something that's easy to get off the ground and yep. something that's easy to land. Being, being in the front row and, and and being in the pilot seat, taking a 747 off or a big airplane versus sitting in row 18C, very different, very different. Very, <laughs> so be very careful. different. So that, that game will, of course, it's available right now on PC via yeah. Xbox Game Pass and Steam. Um, and again, on the 27th, you'll be able to play it. Where, let, me, let me ask a question to all of you. I'll start yeah. with you, Rebecca. You can go anywhere. So where would be, where's the first place you will want to fly? Hmm. I think I would really like to fly over Europe, like maybe the Mediterranean, Greece, Santorini. Okay. That could be pretty cool. I feel like I've already flown all over the US and it's like, okay, it's a lot of a lot of farmland and some cities and some lakes and some mountains, which are nice, but I want to see something different. Okay, that's fair. What about you, Larry? 
I think Jeff, it's there, there's actually you talked about those those moments where you can kind of uh, you know, see the pyramids and so they set you up right away. One of the ones I really liked was <laughs> the one for I think it was Bora Bora. And you're on a float plane on approach to the islands, and you can see it. And I actually brought the float plane down onto the water. And it was kind of, I mean, it was like, I mean, please let me open this door and go for a swim. It was just gorgeous. So, <laughs> Sounds relaxing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's something about the, and we have a lot of float planes or seaplanes, whatever you call them, you know, with the pontoons up here in the Northwest. And I, they, they, I see them leaving all the time. And that's such a cool uh, mechanic because you can land anywhere there's water. Any piece of water is a runway. So it's, it's for the most part. Uh, but it's, it was a lot of fun seeing Bora Bora and flying around it. And of course, you'll notice um, what's great because of the integration. Again, on PC, people have seen this for a long time. But, you know, as you're flying down, you see these kind of these pointers and these flags of like, hey, this is this area and this is this town and this is that and this is this. So it's, mm-hmm. it pulls in all this great data from Bing Maps to kind of enhance your experience and kind of give you an augmented reality esque experience as you're flying. So I'm sorry, long way of saying Bora Bora, French Polynesia. That's what I'm. That's what I was doing. Nice. I got to lather up and get some sunscreen. So, if you're, uh, what if about you? you sort of Wait a minute. What about it. you? Oh, yeah, Jeff. You have to answer the question. Okay, fine. Uh, hmm. Well, last year when when this came out on when Flight Sim Microsoft Flight Simulator came out on PC, we had we were, I was missing Gamescom, and so I did a fly over over Cologne. Right now, I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima. Is another game I'm playing. Um, yeah. And Turns well, out that's careful. like a real be island. careful those comments in YouTube. Watch it. They're oh, we can't them. talk about a PlayStation game. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, you know, uh, naughty, cover naughty. your ears if, if, <laughs> if it would be burning to know that I also have a PlayStation and I play on it. Um, so, yeah, I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima, which is a great game. I'm going to – I'm just going to – I'm in for it on the comments now. <laughs> and um, – You know what? It's made right here in, in, in the Seattle area. Now you are. And – um, <laughs> Yeah, there we go. And anyway, it turns out it's a real island. And because of it, I ended up like looking up some of the history of like uh, Kublai Khan's invasion of, of Japan and that it, did, that it did go through that island. And anyway, it's a real island. And so uh, I think I would want to fly over that because now I, I feel like I know the shape of it. I'm just kind of, I want to see if there's little foxes running around because um, if not, I'll be very disappointed. But the reality is the world is your playground. You can go pretty much anywhere on planet Earth. And that's what's amazing about Flight Simulator. As Jeff said, Flight Simulator coming to console, Xbox Series X and X at the end of uh, the end of July, included in Game Pass. Um, there you go. And, and one last thing, you can play with a, with a controller um, and uh, you know, get you off the ground. Actually, that's how I played uh, on PC with a controller. Very simple, um, but there is, if you want to sort of level it up, there's a number of sort of steps you can take for more advanced controls. And the closer and closer you get, the more it seems like an actual like sort of flight stick. Um, but the I would say the most basic one, and it's a new one, is the Thrustmaster T-Flight Full Kit X, um, which is available for pre-order. It'll be, avail- it'll be on sale the same day as, as uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator on, on console. Um, so you get the HOTUS, which I forget, it's like, Oh, I can't remember what the HOTA stands for, but uh, it's basically like the the stick and sort of like the um, the thing that like accelerates you. And even just that alone, that's eighty nine dollars. And then there's like a whole flight kit with the pedals, and you can get the two of them together for one ninety nine. Then you can you can go up from there. Like if you become like a real flight person and start spending a lot of time there, they call that there's a pilot. even more stuff that will work. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, there's. It's funny because and this lap, stuff does work for for PCs as well. This earlier was it this week, Jeff? I think it was this. No, I guess it must have been last week. I, I went over to campus to one of our hardware labs, and they had a bunch of. And we've got an, an article, and we talk about it on, on Xbox Wire about some of these new accessories coming. And one of them that I was really taken with was the Turtle Beach Velocity One, which is uh, mm-hmm. which is this amazing um, experience that uh, you know it's 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 got the yoke, it's got the um, I don't know what those, I guess the, the accelerator, the, the levers on the so, side. Hodis, we'll yep. get, this will help us both. Hands on <laughs> throttle and stick. Okay. So, so it's got the So throttle. I think the yoke is like more of the, like the way the new Tesla has, like that sort of like yeah. Yeah. rectangular or it's two hands, like, fl- you know, at nine and three. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. 
But yeah, the, uh, the 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 one I was looking at was a Turtle Beach Velocity one. I mean, it had a little LCD screen in the center. It's got the the hat Whoa. switches. It's got the ABXY, of course. Oh. But it's actually got some really cool stuff. You can check that out on Xbox Wire. And I'm sorry, Jeff, I don't mean to take away your news section later on, but it f- felt like it was relevant. No, it's great. So, so the, Look, this is your show. We're just your friends. No, We're just hanging out and talking. I don't friend. enforce a rigid order. Anyway, there you go. Flight Simulator. Looking forward to playing that. Well, why, why don't we stop down now? Take a break. Uh, we've got a couple of interviews to run. I will, um, you know, I will talk about. Uh, I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll let you guys off the hook. I'll, I'll, pick, I'll bring us into the <laughs> interviews. We've got Jeff's going to talk about Battlefield, and then Rebecca's going to talk about Death's Door. This week, Death's Door released on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC uh, from Acid Nerve. And joining me to talk about it today is David Fenn. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Remind me. Are you based in the UK, the US? Yeah, Manchester, North UK. Cool. But we're enjoying is, is a rare heat wave the... here at the moment. Ah, lucky you. <laughs> I've been having a <laughs> rainy New York summer myself. Um, so I've been playing a little bit of Death Store since it just released. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It's surprisingly difficult, though. <laughs> um, but it looks like it's getting really great reviews so far. Um, so how are you guys feeling about the release? Like, was how much how much time led up to this moment? Um, yeah, I think overall we're feeling really good. Um, it's been quite a long journey for us because we've actually been in development for about three and a half years now. And working on something wow. for, for that long, you just never know if it's good anymore. You just you need to wait until it gets in everyone's hands before you have any idea how it's going to be received and how you know everything that you've put into the game, how that's going to come across to people when they're playing it for the first time. So judging from the reaction, I think we are pretty happy that everything we wanted to achieve we've done a pretty good job of and yeah just feeling really really pleased really excited yeah i can only imagine the team's energy and excitement this week it must be i mean three and a half years that's a long time to put into a game um i mean can you tell me a little bit more about just your role and how kind of help you helped bring death store to life but not intended <laughs> um, yeah, so I, um, I've i actually traditionally been a composer and uh, Acid Nerve's initial games I was working on, mainly doing music, but I gradually started doing more kind of production stuff just because um, my uh, business partner, Mark, is like um, the programmer and designer and also now the animator as well. So he has a lot of hats to wear. So I've been um, taking on as much as I could. Uh, so yeah, in Death's Door, I went into it as the producer of the game as well. So I've been in charge of assembling our external team of artists. So we have a couple of concept artists and th- uh, 3D artists on the game as well. Um, and also I've been taking on level design as well. So pretty much the entire world has been crafted by me as well. Um, and then obviously amongst that, doing the music and sound for the game. So everyone on this team does have to do quite a few things there's five of us total who have been working on it throughout the project and then there's been a few more people that we brought in for a bit more help so yeah a lot of a lot of different jobs well i have to ask i saw i crept on your twitter a little bit um, and i saw you put forest music specialist in the twitter bio <laughs> um, have you been spending a lot of like nature walks researching for the game or <laughs> I, I would like to say yes, but I feel like most of my forest music inspiration probably just comes from forest levels in other games because forest levels always have the best music. Uh, but not that like if I if I did do some inspiration walks in nature, I would definitely enjoy that and I'd definitely get a lot out <laughs> of it. But yeah, well, I just I I always find that like um, the best tracks are always the forest music, and it's always the time where um, as a composer you always make the most kind of prettiest and melodic most melodic tracks. And then they always end up being the most favorite ones on the soundtrack as well. So it's just, it's kind of just a funny thing because um, the I think every soundtrack that I've worked on, the Forest songs have ended up being like the favorite one of it. So we'll see about Death's Door. It's, it's a little bit more different to our other soundtracks, but it, it does have a Forest level confirmed. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I can definitely hear the forest level inspiration throughout the soundtrack. I love, um, I, I'm a former band geek myself. And so I, I can, I love hearing the piano and the flute throughout. Like, it's really, really well done. I love the soundtrack. So thank you for that. Um, Thanks. I'm, I also, I, the for, speaking of forest levels, I, I 
am a little bit embarrassed to admit that the forest spirit took me a significantly longer time to <laughs> defeat than I thought it would. Um, can you like comment on just the game's like difficulty level? I mean, it's interesting that there's no like, there's no scale or anything. It's just the one difficulty. You just have to do it. I mean, what kind of, how was it to make that decision for you guys? So we certainly did want it to be fairly challenging and I would say more intense than challenging. Uh, we do want it so that every player will be able to, um, even if they do die initially or die a few times, then you will be able to overcome every challenge. It's not really intended to be something where you are just hitting a wall over and over again. And we thought that, it, I suppose it probably is a bit brutal in retrospect to <laughs> uh, put you up against a boss right at the start of the game but i like to think that even if you do take a few tries at that then once you've done that then that will set you up feeling super confident going into the rest of the game um because you know you beat a boss at that point so you know you've got nothing to dread coming up you know you, you have the ability to do it so that was our goal um so yeah like other than that um i think as the game progresses then we want you to have a bit of choice when it comes to uh, what you're trying to take on and what you are attempting to do. So when you do come up to a mandatory boss in the game, then you will, if you are struggling, then you will, will always have the option to go and explore more areas of the game to find more upgrades that might help you with it or just defeat more enemies or find more of the soul collectibles. There's always more things to find that can help you. So. It's, it's something where we feel like just through the organic method of play in the game, there are things that you can do to make it easier for yourself. And then on the other scale, then there is a optional achievement for completing the entire game using an umbrella as your only weapon, which is basically <laughs> our way of saying this is our hard mode but it, within the universe of the game. So yeah, I feel like we wanted to make it just one kind of core setting, but give you some player choice within that to hopefully cater to all playing styles and audiences. Yeah, I like that. It's nice. It's not just linear. Like so far, I'm already having the option to kind of like come back and complete things when I'm a little bit stronger, perhaps. So yeah, I, I love the yeah, design exactly. of it so far. Yeah, um, cool. I have I have a question though. I'm curious about the little um, the little like flower guys. Is there any like utility to them or am I just like missing something with them? <laughs> There's, so the places where you have, would have encountered them so far, there's probably no utility. It's more just a detail that we wanted to put into it to bring the world to life. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, without any spoilers, that they do relate to the lore of the game and the world okay. and the story to an extent. But I think those forest spirits, they're, they're one of the things that really get us excited as a studio because it's like it's a nice idea. They have this really nice design where they have... Um, leaves which can form three different states they can be a, either a poncho when they're relaxed or mm -hmm. they can bloom into a flower when they're happy to see you or they can um, like hide their head in them entirely when they're scared and running away so we our concept artists made that design we thought that's so cool like it'd be so good to have these in the game and especially to behave dynamically follow you around and then if you start attacking an enemy they'll get scared and run away if you stay still they'll just run up to you and like smile at you and we just we wanted to include that in the game and it's the kind of thing where when you're scheduling and budgeting a game you're like oh that's not really essential to the gameplay but we knew that it'd be something hopefully that people appreciate and makes the world feel more alive so we specifically went to great lengths to make sure we had that kind of detail in the game even even when it wasn't really strictly necessary Okay. Yeah, I can see that. It definitely makes the game feel more alive. You have these little guys like chasing you around and interacting. So I will, I'll wait and I'll figure it out for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds um, good. Well, so I'm, cu I'm curious, what's next for you and the team? Maybe a little bit of time off or? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a fair question. And it's one that we're asking ourselves as well, because we don't really know yet. I would say that we, with Death Store, we did design it to be a complete package from day one. So it's not like we specifically had any more levels or anything that we plan to add later. Um, there are like, there's a bunch of optional stuff in the game already and some post game content as well. So um, hopefully that all, any, everyone playing Death Store will feel satisfied by the end of it. Uh, but we are, we're pretty much in a state where we'll probably work be working on some general patches as tends to be the case with uh with games um but after that we'll i'm sure we'll be taking a little holiday 
And then just, I don't know, we'll see what the reaction is, see what people seem to want from us next. So if anyone listening has any particular ideas, feel <laughs> free to just tweet at us or something and let us know what you want to see from us next. Because obviously we are really happy with Death's Door and we definitely plan to work on more games together. So we just, uh, we'll just have to decide as time goes on. Okay, well, I'm glad it launched in time for you to enjoy the heat wave, at least. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, um, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Anything, maybe some tips for people who are jumping into the game this week, like me? Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I would just thank you to everyone who has already messaged us about the reception to the game. It has been a massive boost and such a big surprise just how people have responded to it. And yeah, we're definitely feeling really good here at Acid Nerve HQ. Um, and then tips for a new player. I would say, although we've talked about the difficulty and we do want it to be intense, I would say not to be intimidated. The game does, it's, it's not unforgiving. You can't actually lose anything when you die. You just have to respawn. You can't really mess up your save. It doesn't do the thing where you lose all your currency when you die and you have to go and find it again. And if you don't find it, you lose it all. So don't be intimidated. You can definitely do it. Um, and yeah, just uh, hope you enjoy the game. Awesome. Yeah, I, I totally agree. My uh, my roommate definitely heard me spewing a few profanities <laughs> while I was trying it out yesterday. <laughs> um, but overall, the difficult like the difficulty is, you know, it's just it's similar to other game like games in the genre. You just kind of have to keep going until you figure out the right rhythm. It's just a matter of like figuring out the pattern and everything with the melee. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's it's an awesome game. Congratulations again on launch, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me. So we are fresh off EA Play 2021, and I've got to say, I did not see what was coming for Battlefield 2042. It's a complete rethinking of multiplayer shooters with their portal. And well, to talk about what we should expect, Christian Grass, the general manager of Ripple Effect Studios in LA is joining us. Thanks so much for taking some time out just after EA Play. Thanks for having me. All right, so I, I, I think, Based on what we saw with the first reveal of Battlefield 2042 last month, we kind of felt like we knew what to expect. We're Battlefield fans here on the show. It looked like a, a bigger Battlefield. Uh, I mean, I've used Levolution in a sentence before. This looked way beyond that. Uh, but then Battlefield Portal kind of changes everything. Can you tell us what you're doing or really what we're going to be able to do with Battlefield Portal? Yeah, so Battlefield Portal is a, a community-driven experience that we've built with sort of the community in mind, with the community at the center. So it's it's a robust set of builder tools coupled with classic content from three of our more, most beloved experiences. So from bad, Battlefield 1942, so all the way from the kind of beginning of Battlefield, Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3. And we have six maps from those three experiences, including weapon, gadgets, vehicles, and soldiers. So you can take those and you can then mix and match those together, including the content that exists in Battlefield 2042. And you can set your own rules and create your own experiences. So it's a, a set of builder tools coupled with classic content that's battlefield uh, portal and it was sort of the inception of that uh, uh, battlefield portal was this idea that we've had from the beginning of the project where we talked about a love letter to the community we wanted we really wanted battlefield 2042 to be a love letter to the community we kind of thought about what could that be and this idea then came up of uh, taking classic content, kind of recreated in the latest version of Frostbite for the next generation of consoles, and then coupling that with the power to create your own experiences, which is something that we wanted to bring in to Battlefield for a very long time. It's something we used to have back in the day, the early days of Battlefield through the mod support that existed. Uh, and finally, we've been able to bring that all together into Battlefield Portal that is uh, a part of Battlefield 2042. So some really interesting like possibilities here. We just saw in that video, uh, a group of like sort of small group of future soldiers, four of them versus 32 players that will be taking on like a 1940s era German squad. And then a, a different one where it was one tank versus 20, 20 drones. This is very interesting. We've seen some like 4v1 types of games before, but not ever, you know, 32 versus four. So how do you balance that out so that everybody's, you know, having a good time? 
Yeah, I mean, so at the center of this, though, is the fact that it's community created, right? So there's a lot of super interesting what if scenarios that you can kind of play around with, such as the uh, the four uh, 2042 soldiers fighting against a large number of World War II soldiers. And what we want to do is kind of give that to the players to create whatever experience they kind of can come up with and that what if scenarios that they can think of. And there are ways for them to balance this by, you know, increasing health or reducing uh, or increasing damage for one team. So it's in a way in the hands of the players to try to make that experience balanced and fun. If we as developers, when we release new modes uh, and new experiences, we will, of course, make sure that it's a fun, balanced experience. But what we're doing here is like we're giving the keys to the car, right, to the community to create their own things and to drive their own experiences. And it's going to be up to them then to figure out a way to make this really fun. Or maybe it doesn't have to be balanced. Maybe it's just crazy and you just go in and and enjoy being the, you know, the, the super powerful tank fighting these small bots and you just have a fun fun for a while you laugh and then you kind of move on so it's in the hands of the community i now i can only imagine you're going to see some you know once you unleash this to the community you're going to see some interesting combinations and metas and stuff i bet day one stuff that you didn't even think about and that's what's awesome about you know handing over the keys to the car to the community as you said how do you plan on surfacing like the coolest stuff so that lots of people get to play like the most interesting stuff you're seeing yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to spotlight community-created experiences. So when you go into the, the portal experience and you go to the community uh, experience section, you'll, you'll, we'll have spotlighted uh, community-created experiences there. And our idea is to kind of rotate that on a very frequent basis, maybe a, a, a every week. So that's going to be our way of curating the content and giving uh, our community um, uh, uh, you know, the greatest experiences, the greatest hits of what they're creating themselves. But then there is also going to be a system where the creators themselves are going to have a unique key or code that's associated with their experience that they, they can then share onto their social media accounts and sort of within their own community to drive people to come and play what they have created. So those are kind of two of the main ways for us to surface that. And then, of course, there's a third option to just look at everything that's been created. And we have a pretty robust tagging system, so you can filter things and find the experience that you want to play, such as, let's say, you're really into hardcore modes, you want to then search on experiences that lack HUD uh, and things like that to find kind of what you're, uh, what you're after. But, but highlighting and spotlighting community experiences is going to be our way, main way of curating. And, All right, so if you do uh, something good yeah. on the Battlefield portal, you're going to want to make sure you you share that out there. Get other people. You be your own best advocate, I guess will be. Uh, so I saw an image. I don't know if you can throw that back up there, Larry, but there's a lot to choose from as far as elements to pull together. There it is. Uh, 13 maps to choose from, uh, six classics. And uh, if we can go back to that first one, there we go. Uh, and then and then the new ones that are going to be in the... Uh, in the in the larger mode that we had seen last month um, on All Out Warfare, then also forty weapons, thirty gadgets, forty vehicles. I love the vehicles, and you get to rank up everywhere. So there's a lot there. I'm curious, like how you bring that together. And I think that next image really talks about it. So, like, what is the, the actual structure? Like, where do you start when you want to? start getting into this mode. This looks like programming. This looks like some cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a logic scripting uh, system. We call it the logic editor. So uh, this is the way for you to kind of modify the rule sets. And, and it's it's really powerful. And our, our goal here has been to push as much power as we can into this tool so that, like you were saying earlier, that people are going to create things that we couldn't even dream of. Uh, it is on a web platform as well, which means that you can create from anywhere. You're not restricted to using a controller, for instance, on the console. And it also makes it very possible for us to kind of work faster on iterating and adding more features and power to it. Uh, so that is, that's kind of the, the logic editor that has a lot of the power to, to change rules. But then there's also a lot of settings uh, that you can modify. So you can set up like, oh, I wanted, I want this mode to be World War II versus 2042. So you just make that uh, a setting and then you can go in and start shifting things around such as, hey, I want to remote, remove iron sites because that didn't exist back in the day when Battlefield 1942 shipped. So that shouldn't be available or you want to increase the damage of a weapon or increase the move speed of the soldiers you're going to have all that in sliders and buttons that you can then uh, tweak uh, per team so that's going to be sort of the, the you know the simpler way and the fast way of getting some different experiences going and then you have the more advanced way of doing it through the logic editor and of course you can mix and match those uh, those two. i would not be surprised if 10 years from now someone says that you're going to be interviewing someone for a job 
over there at Ripple Effect, and they're going to have gotten their start, you know, programming and, and messing around with these modes and doing some cool stuff. And that's just, ah, I wish that existed when I was a kid. So what are some of the more interesting things? We don't have a hold of this yet, but I'm sure people are having fun at the studio. So what are some of the more interesting combinations you've come up with, whether they're just crazy or just anything jump out at you as like, I really hope you get to play this combo. Yeah, there's one that's really interesting. It's not necessarily crazy. It's actually something that was just really, really fun. So we were doing a game jam at the studio three weeks ago. So we were playing around with our own tools to kind of see what we could come up with. And and one of our interns in the studio, he created this mode where everyone uh, has a shotgun, the Saiga, uh, and uh, movement speed is, is sort of a fast-paced experience. Movement speed is a bit increased. You're quick into action again. And it was just so much fun. So everyone was playing that at the studio, having so much fun with that mode. He called it Saiganara, which was a fun, uh, uh, witty name, I guess. So really fun experience. And it just showed like it plays very, very differently from the all-out warfare uh, portion of the game. And it was just pure kind of simple fun. And for our, of course, very talented intern uh, to do that just over the course of a day or two with these, you know, tools that uh, it was just, it just kind of blew me away. And it made me just realize there's going to be so much things coming out of this, not just crazy, crazy things, not just kind of these uh, hypothetical what if scenarios, but also really solid, good, fun experiences that are going to be kind of diversifying what's uh, playable within Battlefield 2042. Yeah, I hope they put that on their their review for you know the end of the the end of the internship. You know, just just so you yeah. know, I made the, the most fun <laughs> mode in the studio. So uh, I, it sounds incredible. Uh, the you, the full game of Battlefield twenty forty two comes out uh, just about three months from now, October twenty second. Planning any way for people to get a hold, play the game a little bit early, anything like that? So there will be an uh, open beta in uh, September. Uh, and uh, if you pre-order uh, Battlefield 2042, you'll get an early access to the to the open beta. So open beta in September. Summer will be over before you know it. Looking forward to getting into the beta and, of course, the final game on October 22nd. Christian Grass, the GM from Ripple Effect Studios. Thanks for joining us from LA. Thanks for really sharing, again, one of the most interesting modes I've ever heard of uh, with a shooter. I know we're going to be having fun with it and uh, can't wait to see you on the battlefield. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. There you go. Great uh, new mode coming to Battlefield. And thank you to Jeff for covering on that. And then, Rebecca, thank you for giving us, uh, for, for sucking up the time of 50% of the development studio for <laughs> Death's Door. Great game now uh, exclusive on Xbox. So thank you for that. Great interviews, folks. Yeah, it was it was really awesome talking to David. Um, I love geeking out about like sound and music and games. And so to talk to someone who composed such a beautiful score is pretty awesome. Well, you actually said something in the interview that I don't think people know is that you, you played an instrument. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, I was in uh, I was in jazz band and symphonic band and marching band in like middle school and high school. <laughs> so what did you play? Pretty cool. <laughs> what, 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 what instrument I did played, you play? So in marching band, I did piccolo, which okay. I kind of cheated. It was like the smallest and the lightest, so mm -hmm. it was it was a good deal for me. Still, um, in jazz <laughs> band, <laughs> in jazz band, I did the uh, tenor sax and jazz piano, but I wasn't very good at jazz piano, so I got that's why I learned how to play the saxophone. Um, and then symphonic band, I played flute. So. so you did the woodwinds and the reeds and the and the pianos and the keys. That's amazing. Well, technically, a saxophone brat, is huh? also a woodwind, but no. It, but no, the saxophone well, doesn't. It doesn't. The, the sax has a reed, though. It has, it has a reed, but it's still a woodwind. Okay, I did. I Jeff, did you know that? <laughs> mm, clearly not. Here's the true. Here's the. Uh, I know he's like brass. Question. Which which one is both? I don't know. Isn't it? Aren't they made out of brass? Isn't that a thing? I don't know. <sighs> we can all Google it later and, and check. <laughs> yeah. it, but I'm pretty <laughs> positive. I would. <laughs> I spent a lot of time doing these things. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not doubting you. I. No, I just I didn't know. Clearly, know nothing. See, you, you never, that, that's the beauty of this show is you never know what you're going to learn. And today we learned about not only Rebecca's musical talents, but also the fact that the saxophone doubles as both a a, 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 a brass and a woodwind. So. A brass in my mind. It's not. It's not, it's not a, that might not, not be a thing. <laughs> ah, it's the saxophone episode. Anyway, uh, by the way, do you have a saxophone? Could you blow us a little a uh, little music sometimes? 
Mask or maybe the Piccolo? Um, I don't have a saxophone, but I do have a sad trombone to go with Jeff's brass comments. <laughs> Little. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. I found an image. I found, it, I found an image here. Okay. And according to this, there's the wind, there's the percussion, which we we know about. You'll have your your drums and your piano and stuff like that. Then you have your string instruments, violin, you know, cello. guitar, harp, violin, whatever, bat, bass. Um, then you've wind, which apparently. And again, this is based on a very quick search and it may not be the final word. They're also using Comic Sans in this in this image, so perhaps. <laughs> Ooh, sketch. <laughs> but they have wind broken into woodwind, which would include the flute and the piccolo, mm -hmm. and then brass, which they say is trumpet, French horn, and that sad trombone that you played for Right, me. because they, they, they've got... Oh, the, trombone, yeah. They've got the mouth... But not a saxophone. Because, but not a saxophone. Wait, did you it say saxophone? It doesn't sax? say what saxophone yeah. is. It left it out. So I think that That's the world may never yeah, know. Yeah, saxophone, and, saxophone and clarinet are both uh, wins. Woodwinds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, enough about that. Jeff, we've got some news... I appreciate you trying to fact check me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to fact check you. I'm just trying to learn for myself. Like, where would I come up with something so stupid? And um, obviously, you're right. It's the same color, so it like it makes sense. It's the same color as like a trombone and a trumpet. So, okay. No, I learned okay. <laughs> same color. There you go. We're color coding. I don't know. I mean, speaking of color, anyway. Code, sorry, news. <laughs> yeah, yeah let's, let's, Jeff. What do you got for news today? I know you got some headlines. So why don't you? Look, bring there, it there's right? no debate that this is an amazing month for <laughs> Xbox Game Pass subscribers. Did I do that okay? Uh, so coming soon to Xbox Game Pass, we just announced this week, significant amount of games, like across the spectrum. And uh, we've talked about Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, game I really want to talk about is Chris Tales. Oh. So this is an RPG made in Colombia that they're calling a love letter to JRPGs. But let me tell you, yeah, first of all, incredibly like unique visual style. Like how many games Ooh. do you play that look like this? Uh, but what's really interesting is that you're playing in three different sort of uh, time windows in the same time. So there's this triangle, as you see there, in the middle is the present, to the right is the future, and to the left is, is the past. And you can, during a battle, um, punch like a, an enemy into the future and they might be old and brittle and then you can really kick their butt or you can send them perhaps back in time and they have not yet learned to master this weapon and so it can be easier it can also work the dynamic. other way yeah they might be better in the future than they are in the in the past and things like that uh, but even as you're walking through town you're seeing like there's i saw one shot that where it was like here's a, a woman in the present she's got she's pushing a stroller in the past she doesn't have a kid in the future She's got like a teenager, you know, walking with her. And it all happens in real time. And you're seeing sort of all three at once, which is, I just haven't seen games do this. Um, there's games that have played with time where you're, you're snapping back and forth. I think a great one uh, of, that we always talk about was, would be Titanfall 2. Another one that we would talk about is the Clockwork Mansion in um, in Dishonored 2. Right. Phenomenal level. Uh, but this is like, kind of like more of an always on situation. Uh, and I, I think it's really awesome. It's part of Xbox Game Pass. Definitely try it out. It's called Chris Tales. What was and, that, Jeff? Uh, part of the premise. Game Pass? I can download it right now if I'm a Game Pass subscriber? Yes, you can. Why Another game that, that I'm really interested in trying is Raji, an ancient epic, which you take on. Uh, I, I believe it, it's, it's based on a, sort of an action game based on uh, a, like Indian mythology. And so interested in trying that. Another one, Last Stop, which is more of a, a narrative game. It's a third person adventure. It takes place in London, in present day London. And I miss London. I love London. And that sounds really cool. There's some supernatural stuff, some classics, Blinks the Time Sweeper, Crimson oh, Sky. That, that was one of the first yeah. ones to use the 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 storage device, i.e., the hard drive on the original Xbox. Mm -hmm. So Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge. For many people, their first their first ever live multiplayer game crimson sky is a great 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 one gosh i remember that uh and then coming up next week this is a game that a lot of people are looking forward to we showed it uh, for the first time last year and it, and it garnered a lot of attention is the ascent available on xbox day one uh on cloud console and pc um a uh co-op action shooter rpg uh, I'm going to be on vacation in the next couple of weeks. I'm planning on playing through with a friend, playing The Ascent. Love to have you all join me. So uh, that is a game that is uh, I'm very excited about. And one of the things, we have a blog post up on this, and um, 
you know, we talk about the games, those are the headliners, but there's, don't forget there's always perks and DLC and discounts. There's discount on Minecraft Minions DLC. There's a uh, discount on the new Echoing Void DLC that you were telling us all about last week, Rebecca. Uh, but also want to talk about a collection that's happening right now. There's a collection, the 20 Years of Xbox collection, which features a number of games uh, throughout the history of Xbox that uh, uh, will bring you back, perhaps, like Fable Anniversary, Banjo-Kazooie, um, but also newer stuff like Dirt 5 and uh, Battlefield. Battlefield 5 is now, uh, via the magic of um, EA Play, is, is part of uh, the collection there as well. If you're an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member, the only thing you got to do is find the time. Wow, 20 which, years. Yeah, I know, right? Hey, hey, I can uh, hear you. Fallout New Vegas, get the Gears, all the Gears games. There's a lot in this collection. So yeah. there's it's there's so much in Xbox Game Pass that we have to sort it by different ways so things don't get lost. Game Pass. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you for the, those. Are the, those are the headlines for this week. Uh, it's been a busy week, and we, you know the weeks ahead are even more busier. You're not going to join us next week. Jeff has next week off, so Rebecca, it's probably going to be you and I. I think I may bring in a special guest. I'm working on it right now, so stay tuned. Ooh, exciting! Yeah, so I, if, they, if assuming they're able to, we can get the contract work done, then they'll be here. Otherwise, it'll just be you and I. But stay tuned for that. But top uh, lawyers on the case. Top top men and women. Top people on the. Wait case. a second. Is it possible to get compensated for this? I feel like we need to we need to have a talk. The compensation <laughs> is just the being here alone is, you know, it's just being here together. That's the fun. So Mm. <laughs> okay. like, that's not so bad is, sure? that, <laughs> is that really is that is that the best anyway uh all right gang so jeff you have a good week off next week anything to wrap up before we and the uh, week after so yeah, oh, uh right. have oh, a great right. shows i'll Two be listening you, and um are you taking your ooh, keys from graham well um t- my annual leave i just know that you're gonna have jason ronald in here and i'm never coming back it's what's gonna happen well that's 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 not true as far as you know. there must be a jr in this seat Right, so there we go, and that box, and that box over there. So, yes. uh, Rebecca, anything to, you want to share before we wrap up here and send people along their merry way? No, just one last push for Death's Door. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Try it out. Thank you very much. All right, gang, we'll see everybody next. Uh, Jeff, have a nice couple weeks off. Uh, Rebecca, we'll see you next week, and everybody else, join us then, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.